And because we had agreed that you will sort out the theory on your own, I will just go straight to just go straight to question two B. Question two B. The following data relates to the weekly amount spent on entertainment by households. The annual income of the head of the household and the household size in terms of number of persons. So we have that, a computer output of the above data using a spreadsheet packet was provided as follows. Regression statistics. Uh, now we are given the number table and the table of coefficients. And then we are told to do the regression equation of the data. And we are told to route the figures to two decimal places. So in that case, the regression equation we will have in this way. Regression equation. Regression equation. So the regression equation, the values are obtained from this table, the column that is titled coefficients. The column that is titled coefficients. So you will say y is equal to minus 4.1 plus 0.99x1 plus 1.76x2 x2 where y represents amount spent on entertainment, amount spent on entertainment. X1 is annual income, annual income. X2 is household size. Household size is household size. Household size. Then from there, we are told to do a statistical analysis. We are told to do a statistical analysis. A statistical analysis. <coughs> now the question is not clear exactly what should be done. The question is not clear exactly on what should be done. Uh, in that case, you do everything that is doable or you do what you think should be done. For my case, I want to do everything that can be done using this data. Remember, when we talk about statistical analysis, it is about the reliability tests. It is about the reliability test. The reliability test. The reliability test. It's about the reliability test. So there are three types. The first one is called economic plausibility. Economic plausibility tests. Now, the economic plausibility tests to 
tutaipanga namna hii we can have it like a table we can have it like a table whereby we have a uh, independent variable independent variable independent variable expected Well, this one I can have it like this. Eh? Relationship. Relationship with dependent dependent variable. relationship with dependent variable and this relationship is divided into two we have the expected and we have the observed and then we will have the conclusion or the comments, the conclusion or the comments. So we have a table like that. Okay, you are saying you're not able to see clearly. Unfortunately, my camera cannot be adjusted. Let me change the map pane. Uh, so, this one is independent variable. Then uh, relationship with dependent variable. This is expected, this is observed, and this is the conclusion. Conclusion. Okay, let me change the mark print. So the first independent variable is annual income. Annual income. And the second one is household size. Household size. Is that visible now? Aika and Beth, are you able to see that now? Okay. So what? So the expected relationship, the expected relationship between 
annual income and our dependent variable, which is the amount spent, we expect a direct relationship. And given the household, we also expect a direct relationship. Remember, a direct relationship is where So just copy from where you can see uh, Haika, maybe I'll take a photo and send that bit. I'll take a photo and send that bit. I'm saying uh, the relationship is direct. The relationship is direct. So what have we observed? We have observed a direct relationship. This one is also direct. That is positive 0 0.99, that's a direct relationship. Then here we have also observed a direct relationship that is 1.76, which is positive. So what do we conclude? This one is plausible because they are in agreement. And this one is also plausible. It is said to be plausible. It is said to be plausible if uh, what you expected is in agreement with what you have observed. It is in agreement with what you have observed. <laughs>
Aika, now you should be sorted. Check in the group. Okay, so we proceed. Uh, the next group of tests, the next group of tests. B is called goodness of fit tests. Now, the goodness of fate tests, there are six of them. There are six of them. So you go checking whether each has been mentioned. Whether each has been mentioned. Uh, one is R square. R square. So R square. I might could still give you the coefficient of determination. Coefficient of determination. That is R square. Coefficient of determination R square. Now, if you look at this question, you can see R square, it is uh, 0 0.45. So that one, if you explain, you express it as a percent, you express it as a percent, you say uh, R square is 45%. Meaning, meaning 45% of amount spent, of amount spent depends on, or is explained, depends on income and size. Income and family size or household size. So 45% of the amount spent, it depends on the annual income and family size, and family size. And something else that you could comment about that, it shows it is therefore, it is therefore a very weak relationship, a very weak relationship that should be rejected, that should be rejected, that should be rejected, that should be rejected. A very weak relationship that should be rejected. Remember, if a relationship is uh, below 60%, you are supposed to reject it. If it is below 60%. Uh, the next thing uh, that we need to talk about, 
the next thing that you need to talk about uh, is about what number two, what we call standard error of estimates. Standard error of estimates. Standard error of estimates. Standard error of estimates, SE. Standard error of estimates, SE. Now, this one is not provided. Is not provided. So, if it is not provided, you don't comment about it. You don't comment about it because it is not provided in the question. Number three, it is what we call F tests. Now, F tests, it is provided. We are given F calculated, F calculated from your table, from your table, the table of ANOVA, you can see where it's written F. So F calculated is 6.89. I hope you're able to see that figure, 6.89. Then F critical, F critical is the one that is given there as significant. So the two decimals, that is 0 0.01. That is 0 0.01. And therefore, we comment conclusion. Conclusion that you make is that the relationship, the relationship, the relationship is significant. The relationship is significant since F calculated is greater than F critical. That is 6.89 is greater than 0 0.01. 6.89 is greater than been provided. Uh, number four, the next test number four is correlation coefficient. Correlation coefficient. R. Correlation coefficient R. Now the correlation coefficient R as you can see in the table, what is written as multiple R, multiple R, you say R is 0 0.67. R is 0 0.67. After giving out the value, you need to tell us the mean. Shows a strong direct relationship, a strong, direct relationship. You cannot say it is very strong because it is not very close to one. It's not very close to one, but uh, it's not bad off. 0 0.67 is a, a good measure, is a good measure. Uh, the next thing, Number five is standard error. Standard error of the slope. Standard error of the slope, that is SB. Standard error of the slope. Standard error of the slope.
So for the annual income, for the uh, X1, SB is equal to, you go to the table where you can see the standard errors, the last table where you can see the standard errors, it is 0 0.31. 0 0.31 and then for x2 sb is sb is 1.72 1.72 if you go to the table where you can see the errors 1.72 now what do you say about the standard errors if you check your notes, we say the smaller the error, the better the equation. So we are going to say that X1 is better, X1 is better than X2 since it has a smaller error. It has a smaller error. So X1 is better. Income seems to explain the expenditure better than how household is explaining. Yeah, that is how we go about it. The next step, number six, we normally call it a T test. It is T test. It is T test. Now, T test, we will arrange it like this. We will arrange it like this. We have the independent, we have the independent variable. We have independent variable, independent variable. We have T calculated. We have plus or minus T critical. And we have the conclusion or the comment. We have the conclusion or the comment. The conclusion or the comment. We have the conclusion or the comment. Now for the independent variables, you can either use the representatives x1 and x2 because we already have said in our workings, x1 represents what and x2 represents what. Or alternatively, you can write the full names. Alternatively, you can write the full names, whichever pleases you. Okay, now the T calculated, the T calculated, if you go again to the table, the last table, you will see a column that is titled T statistic. T statistic. So if you are there, those are the T calculated values. So for the income, it is 3.14. 3.14. And for this other one, it is 1.03. It is 1.03. Then the value that is given there as P value, the, the second column or the next column, P value are what we call the critical, the value that we read from the tables. So that one will be 0 0.03. 
So the work was plus or minus 0 0.01. And this other one is plus or minus 0 0.32. Plus or minus 0 0.32. Now, maybe I remind you on how this, this comment are made. Uh, if you look at the decision rule that we normally draw, it is usually divided into two. It's usually divided into two. I can even divide it easily. This is where we have minus T critical. And this is where we have positive T critical. If your value is in, uh, anywhere here, we say it is insignificant. 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 I want to use the short form. And if you are below here, if you are below here, we say it is significant. If you are above here, we say it is significant. We say it is significant. So I'll write you now to tell me whether X1 is significant or insignificant. If uh, this is minus 0 0.01, this is plus 0 0.01, and I calculated the 3.14. And you tell me whether uh, X1 is significant or insignificant. I'm waiting, Beth, Eva, Haika, and Timothy. I want to hear from you. Is that significant or insignificant? Yeah. Haika says it is insignificant. Okay, this one, Aika, is very significant. And why it is significant is because you can see, is because you can see, this one is supposed to be minus 0 0.01. And this is positive 0 0.01, this one. So if you come looking for 3.1, 3 equal to And when you are above here, we say it is significant. Is that OK, Haika? OK, what about the other one? What about X2? Is it significant or insignificant? Yes, Beth, you say it is significant. Good. This one is significant. Because you can see this 1.3, it is on the upper side. This is 0 0.32, it is on the upper side. Yes, Eva, good. 
So I think we are okay with that. That was the second uh, set of tests. Now we go to number three. We go to number three, which is called assumptions. That is uh, C. We call them assumptions. We call them assumptions. Once again, there are six assumptions. There are six assumptions. Number one is called linearity. It's called linearity. Now, linearity, you simply check whether this equation takes the general form of a linear function. So you will say the relationship, the relationship is linear. The relationship is linear since the equation obtains, the equation obtains, the equation obtains has taken the shape, has taken the general form, the general format of y is equal to a plus bx. The relationship is linear since the equation obtained has taken the general format of y is equal to a plus bx. So you can see this equation that we got here, it took that format. So the relationship is linear. The relationship is linear. Uh, the second assumption is called zero mean. Zero mean. The zero mean of the error terms. Now this question has not given us uh, has not given us data for the errors, so we cannot test that. Number three, it is called constant variance. Constant variance. Number three is called constant variance. Number four is called normality. It's called normality. Number five is called uh, autocorrelation. Autocorrelation. And number six is called multi collinearity. Multi collinearity. So, all these they are not provided in the question at hand. And as I said earlier, if something is not provided, you don't discuss it, you don't talk about it. But for me, I've chosen to mention that so that you can be able to get time after this lesson and look at what all these means and how they are tested. So that is a, a good recap of what we call reliability tests, of what we call reliability tests. And that is exactly what we had done the other day in our handout when we revised the question of June 2005, question one. So as that point, I'm confident that if you came across a question on ANOVA, you will be able to handle it confidently and accurately. So if you are okay, type okay so that I proceed to the next question. If you are not okay, you register your concern. Am I right? Yeah, Beth is okay.
de hadas. Va, es eso, ok. Ahí cae, sí, ahí move. Timothy, are you okay? Okay, there's Aika. Timothy, I hope you are still in class. So look at question 3C. Question 3C of May Question 3C. Inventory controls. Inventory controls and simulation. Inventory controls and simulation. So, as usual, when you see inventory controls, rather simulation. We begin by doing the Monte Carlo. So we are going to say Monte Carlo, Monte Carlo for demand. Monte Carlo for demand, whereby we begin with units. Then we have probability. Then we have cumulative probability. And then we have the age. So the demands are running from three. We have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, and 12. 11 and 12. Then I also create space for Monte Carlo. For lead time, Monte Carlo for lead time. So here, this lead time is in days, 
And these days are two, three, four, five. Two, three, four, five. Then I have probability, cumulative probability, and the range. And the range. So the probabilities for these ones are 0 0.02, 0 0.08, 0 0.11, 0 0.16, 0 0.19, 0 0.13, 0 0.10, 0 0.08, 0 0.07, 0 0.06. And 0 .06. So cumulating, this will be 0 0.02, this will be 0 0.10, 0 0.21, 0 0.37, 0 0.56, 0 0.69, 0 0.79, 0 0.87, 0 0.94, and 1. I believe we are all comfortable with how to create the rate, but if you are not, you should let me know. So this is zero, zero to zero, one, zero, two to zero, nine, 10 to 20, 21 to 36, uh, 37 to 55, then 56 to 68, 69 to 78. Uh -huh. Seventy nine to eighty six, eighty seven to ninety three, ninety four to ninety nine. I uh, have this is 0 0.20, 0 0.30, 0 0.35, then 0 0.15, 0 0.20, 0 0.50, 0 0.85, and 1. So this is 0, 0 to 19. 20 to 49, 50 to 84, 85 to 99. So I want us to design the simulation sheet, which
which is also known as the Rogic. It's also known as the Rogic. So we are told to run for 10 days. So we will say day number. We have day number there. Then we always have the opening stock. Opening stock. Then it is closely followed by demand. Demand, we have the random number. And then we have the units. The random number and the units. That is followed by Units sold, units sold, it is followed by shortage units, shortage units, it is followed by closing Stock is followed by closing stock. Closing stock. It is followed by order. Not a had a big speech to be in Asia. It is followed by read time, we have random number and days, Make my space to require working. Let me design it again so that I don't. Let me design, but nothing is changing. Nothing is changing. It's only that I need some more, some bigger space. Have total here. That should be the very last column. I have uh, ordering, ordering. I have shortage. And I have 
Holding. So these are the costs. Then I have days here and random number. So this is lead time. Then order here. Then closing stock. Shortage. Shortage units, shortage units, units sold, units sold, I have units here, a random number, this is demand. This is opening stock. Then I have day number. So this is my simulation sheet or the logic. Simulation sheets. Or the logic. So if you are finished drawing, Adika finished. We are finished drawing, Adika finished.
Yeah, I can see Andre Iva has finished. So the others. Okay, let me proceed. Uh, For the marks, we can actually even uh, arrange them like this. Eh? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh -huh. Then we require total. And the average total and the average have given more space. Total and the average. So let's first of all put the random numbers for the mark. This is 68. This is 13. This is 09. Then I have 20, followed by 73. Followed by 07, followed by 92, 99, 93, and 18. However, for the lead time, you only put the random numbers when there is need. You only put the random numbers when you need to place an order. So you don't put them like you have done here. So, Nikiweka units, 68 Ikohapa, those are eight units. 13 Ikohapa, those are five units. 09 is here, this is uh, what? Uh, four units. 20 is here, this is five. 73 Ikohapa, nine units. 07, 4 units, 92, 11, 99, 12, 93, 11, 18 is 5. 18 is 5. So remember, there are different approaches of dealing with this. One is just the random numbers for the match, Namarisa, like what you have done. The second one is where you go at a time, a, a day at a time. So in the two day one, the end of the commission, Namarisa. So all of them are acceptable. All of them are acceptable. So let's begin the analysis. Beginning the analysis, you will notice, you will get to notice that the opening stock, according to information uh, three, is 30 units. The opening stock is 30 units, so you put that here. And then we are told that the order quantity is 40. 
and the Lyonda level is 20. So we begin. You have opening stock of uh, 30. Demand is eight. So you sell all the eight because you can afford and no one goes home without. And therefore the closing stock is 22. And do you place the order? No, because you have not gone below uh, 20. Then when you say no, there is nothing in the lead time. There is nothing in the lead time. Now for the holding cost, according to information uh, two, the holding cost is two shillings per unit. So the same 22 times two, that is 44. The shortage is zero, ordering is zero, and therefore here we have 44 commission. I am. Day number two, we open with 22. The closing stock there becomes the opening stock here. We get five customers coming. So we are able to sell to all of them because we have more than five. So no one goes home without what they wanted. And we close the day with 17. Now we are below 20, the other point. But you don't make the order at that point, so you will still say no. Reason being, it is after you have closed your business that you come to realize you are closing stock. So if already you have closed, you don't place orders at night. Those people who surprise you, they already have also closed. And even the other departments in your company, they have also closed. So tomorrow morning, that is when you shall place the order. So meanwhile, we proceed and having said no, there is nothing there in the lead time. So for the holding cost, it is two times 17, which is that four and no shortage, no ordering and we have that four. We have that four. From there, day three, we open with 17. We sell four units. Uh, here, because that is the number of customers who come. Shortage is zero, no one misses. So we close with 13. Do you place the order? Yes. This is the time we are closing, we are placing the order. So when you say yes, you pick the first random number of lead time, which is that, which is that. Then with that 30, you go to the Monte Carlo of lead time. And when you come here, Unapata 30, Kohapa, where we have three days. So you tell us these are three days, that week. Then from there, you need to count three days from there, including the day of the order. So one, two, three. So those three days must last. So the order that we are placing on day three will be received on day six. You can even mark it that way. The order that we are placing on day three will be received on day six in the morning. Meanwhile, as we wait for that order, we proceed with the analysis. So holding cost would be 13 times two, that is 26. No one has missed, but the cost of placing an order, which we have done this morning, uh, according to information one is eight shillings. So this is eight here. And when you add, that gives you 106. When you add, that gives you 106. Right. We go to number four. We are now opening with that team. 
demand is fat. So you sell all the fat. No one goes home with that. And you close with eight. Break the order, no, because we are just waiting the other one that we placed. So when you say no, nothing here. The holding cost is eight times two, which is 16. Shortage zero, ordering zero. So the cost is 16. The cost is 16. We go to number five, where we are opening with eight units. Nine customers come. When nine customers come, we sell eight because those are the units we have. Therefore, one customer goes home without. One customer goes home without, and we close with zero. And then we are not placing an order, so nothing here. So if we are not, if we are close with zero, the holding cost is zero. Shortage cost now, uh, according to information number what? Number two, every unit out of stock is costing 24. So that will be 20 shillings here. And then this is zero, and this is 20 here. Then from there, day six we are opening with zero, but it's also the day we are receiving. So you say zero plus, we are receiving our order of 40 units, 40 units. I'm putting that zero there because it's not all the times when you be receiving the order, you will be at zero. There are times you'll be having some few units, so you add them to the new arrivals. So four customers come. When four customers come, we sell four units. We sell four units, and then no one will miss. So the closing stock is that six units. Uh, the, we place the order, no. And then the real time is zero. Sorry, sorry, nothing there. So the holding cost will be two times that six times 72. Uh, no shortage cost, no ordering cost, and this is 72. Two. So that six is the opening stock. Eleven customers come, so we are able to sell all the eleven, and no one goes home without. So to Nafuga Yosiku with twenty-five units, and then you break the order. No, so nothing here. And uh, the holding cost will be 25 times 2, which is 50. Then the shortage, 0, the ordering, 0. So we have 50 there. 50. Then for number 8, we open with 25. 12 customers come, so we are able to sell 12. Shortage units, no one lacks. Uh, so we close with 13 units. So we are already below our the other point of uh, 20, but as I said, we are placing the order the following day. So you say no. And there is nothing there now. So the holding cost is 13 times 2, which is 26. And no shortage, no ordering. And we have 26 there. We have 26. 
Aya. Then day nine, we open with 13 units. We open with 13, where we now have a unit sold being 11. No one misses. No one misses. And the closing stock is two units. And it is the time to place the order. It's the time to place the order. So we say yes. So take the second random number, which is 22. So 22, you find again, it is three days. So when it gives you three days, those must be day 9, 10, 11. So those goods will be received on day 12, which is not part of our analysis. It's not part of our analysis period. Uh, so that one we leave it and proceed. So the holding cost will be two times two, that is four shillings. No shortage, but we have ordering of eight there. And this gives us 84. That gives us 84. The next is uh, day 10, when we are opening with two units, five customers come. And that means we are only able to sell two, report a shortage of three, close the business with zero. You don't place the order, so nothing here. So no holding cost, but we have a shortage cost of 20 times three. That is uh, 60, no ordering, and this is 60. So from there now you say 60 plus 84 plus 26 plus 50, plus 72, plus 20, plus 16, plus 106, plus 34, plus 44 is 512, 512, that is the total, 512, that is the total, and then the average should be 51.2. The average should be 51.2. The average should be 51.2. So are we okay with that? So I think because of the interest of time, uh, time is already, I'm only having seven minutes. I cannot be able to start and finish the next question. So we stop there for now. I said I'm going to send you two videos that will complete what was supposed to be covered in the handout I had given you, hoping that you have been watching the others. Hoping that you have been watching the others. So if you have been watching the others, then you realize where I have picked today. That is where we are. So watch the others. I will send you two more uh, so that you are able to see everything. So thank you so much. Have a good day. And we meet now on Monday, God willing.